Hi and welcome to AI for Business, where we will explore machine learning solutions for real-world business applications. This YouTube channel is aimed at enthusiasts and business professionals who would like to learn more about the real-world business applications of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Please note that the information in this video is non-technical, as we will approach the subject from a business point of view. Our goal is to educate, encourage, and support businesses to start their AI journey. The topic for today is demand forecasting using machine learning. So let's start with the current challenges involved with demand forecasting. Obviously, there are various challenges and depending on the application or industry. However, today I want to highlight four key challenges. The first one is forecasting errors and which includes financial forecasting. Secondly, we have supply chain waste, thirdly, lost sales, mainly due to products not being available, and lastly, resource optimization. These are the key problems that machine learning can tackle very well, and I will show you now what it solves. The results are significant. Because it's able to analyze a vast variety of data, the new system can dynamically respond to changes in the data sets, and it can discover complex relationship and updates the forecast demands much better. According to a report from McKinsey, the three key solutions are a 30 to 50% reduction in forecasting errors, up to 65% lost sales reductions, and 20 to 50% of inventory reductions. In, in addition to that, we see a reduction in manual intervention and waste in supply chain, together with improved lead times. So these are great results, but let's take a step back and define demand forecasting. So it's a field of predictive analytics, which tries to understand and predict demand to optimize supply decisions. In traditional system, the data is fed into the computer. Then based on static predetermined set of rules, the software generates the results. So generally speaking, there are three types of forecasting. The first is qualitative fo forecasting. And this is mainly based on non-numerical data and often in the form of expert reviews, market research, social media, or comparative analysis. The second is time series analysis. And this is forecasting based on high number of numerical histor historical data. And this is great for identifying fluctuations, cyclical patterns, and other trends. The third is causal models, and this is a bit more sophisticated as it takes into consideration multiple factors, such as competitors, economic forces, and other socioeconomic factors. However, do remember that although it sounds very complex, these are all hard-coded solutions based on predetermined set of rules. So now look, let's look at the power of machine learning. And particularly in time series and causal models, since they require large data sets to make prediction. And this is something that machine learning is very good at. However, also qualitative forecasting is possible by analyzing web analytics, product attributes, or social media data. And a great benefit of AI powered demand forecasting is the vast amount of data it can analyze within a very short space of time. And this ranges from widely available historic sales data, customer profiling data, as well as data of the entire supply chains. And simultaneously, it can also analyze real-time data, such as live advertisements, campaigns, prices, local weather forecasts, complex seasonalities, and social media analysis. And the result is that these demand forecasting algorithms are great for discovering nonlinear and complex relationships in the data. And it all does this without needing to pre-select the exact model type or make assumptions about external fact factors. And exactly this is where machine learning is so strong at. And although this is a non-technical video, I do want to just mention three examples of machine learning approaches that can be used for demand forecasting. And the first is supervised learning and mainly using re regression and secondly, a sentiment analysis, analysis, and this can be used for qualitative research, such as the opinions and views on certain products via social media. And lastly is neural nets, which in general is a technology built to simulate the activity of the human brain. And specifically in this application, it can be used for pattern recognition and the passage of input through various layers of simulated neural connections. So this is a very 
broad subject, as most industries have some form of demand forecasting, whether from a customer, production, or financial point of view. And I see many possible applications in the retail sector, manufacturing, and financial industry. However, in order to make the algorithms work, it is essential that you need a large data set. And second to that, the algorithms need to work as it should be, and the optimization of those algorithms can be very complex. So there are both requirements and limitations. Now, in the next few slides, I want to mention three different examples of how demand forecasting has improved certain systems. The first one is Luxottica. They're a global leader in eyewear, and every year it adds many new styles to its collection. It now uses a machine learning to cluster the behavior of past launches. It selects the most probable performance for the new products and then learns common demand behaviors in the first launch period through detailed demand profiles. Luxottica improved their global weighted mean absolute percentage or error by 10% and reduced the forecast baseline on new launches by about 30%. The second example is Lennox Residential Heating and Cooling. Here it uses machine learning and cluster anal analysis to identify and track seasonality patterns and trends for its systems. For example, the system recognizes more than 200 microclimates within the United States and their seasonal timing variations. Machine learning sits through the locations to identify clusters with similar seasonality profiles. The result is that Lennox improved service levels by 16%, while simultaneously increasing inventory turns by 25%. And lastly, this is a very recent development, McDonald's has just bought AI company Dynamic Yield, and with it, it bought a technology that will allow McDonald's to customize its menu displays based on variables such as the weather and the time of day, as well as previous customer choices. And therefore, it is able to improve the customer demands and experience. Many thanks for watching. Please support us by subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification button so you're always up to date with the latest videos. The goal is to create frequent content on machine learning applications in the enterprise. Have a great day.